We are starting now? All right, wonderful. Okay, uh, we are st started? So we are starting the interview. Um, we are at Satnam Yoga and it's a wonderful um, health fair. And please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Sava. I'm a clairvoyant reader. I do clairvoyant readings. And, yeah, clairvoyant readings and psychic readings. I do like readings of layers of the aura, you know, first chakra through seventh chakra. I also do mediumship readings and past life readings. I've been coming to this healing circle for over a year. I love it. All the people are really fun and nice and high vibration, and it's a really good time. How did you start it? One of my best friends referred me here. She did Reiki and she did card readings. And then um, we did a few healing circles together and she ended up moving away. And then um, I just started, you know, coming by myself and doing them. So I've only missed a few of them. I try to come every single month because I have so much fun. Uh, so what's your process? How do you start? How do you finish? What What is your thinking process when you do the uh, session? Um, I don't really think. I just channel the readings. And since these are short readings, I try to get as much information uh, to the people as I can in a short amount of time. But sometimes people have specific questions or they have... Uh, layers of the aura or chakras that they want to have looked at so again I don't really like think about it I just kind of channel through the information like as fast as I can within the you know time constraints so that people can get the answers that they need if they don't have the time or the resources to get a full you know reading from me like on the outside so uh, do you do outside readings too yeah yeah this is what I do full-time full-time uh, tell me about your business. How do you do this? Um, I do on the phone or via Skype. Sometimes I, you know, do in-person readings or events, but I always feel like I don't have the best track of time, so I feel like it's easiest to keep track of time, you know, when I just do the phone or the Skype readings. And um, I like I like doing events. I like doing in-person readings also. It's a lot of fun. Like, this is fun for me. And... Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's a good time. I feel like I'm always busy because, you know, people want answers. I do energy healing also, but people always come to me for the readings because they want, you know, they want answers more than they want healing. But I think healing is very important because I still do energy healing and I love energy healing, but I just feel like a lot of people feel lost. Maybe they're not as in touch with their own inner voice or their own inner guidance. So they kind of need to look to certain individuals to, you know, give some guidance or answers. Or sometimes people have that inner guidance and they just want someone to confirm what they already know. A lot of people do that where they are very intuitive, but they just want to confirm what they already know. Did you have any experiences where angels or aliens came to you and you see them close nearby, near near you? Oh yeah, a lot of times. Well, what I see is that some people have a lot of angels around them. Some people have a lot of fairies around them. Some people have a lot of aliens around them. Some people have a lot of undead spirits around them. You know, and some people have a lot of animal spirit guides. So it just depends on who you are and what your past lives are and um, you know a lot of times when I'm giving a reading I'm more focused or fixated on the actual person than their spirit guides but sometimes their spirit guides or these extra energies you know pop in also and they want to be said hello to so I just try to focus on the actual person but you know if their spirit guides wanting a hello and they're wanting to hear from it then I will you know say hello to that as well and yeah it's so funny because Everyone has their different spirits around them. You know, there's those people with that special connection with the angels. There's those people who get, like, you know, messed with by aliens. Or there are certain people who have spirit guides who are aliens. So it's just interesting. Um, you know, I think that... I don't know. I mean, I just I just think it's people are interesting and the stuff they have in their space is always interesting. You know, you can never get bored because everyone has a lot of interesting things going on in their space. No what's one is ever boring? I'll say that. What's your favorite uh, a angel or an alien or a spiritual force? What What is your connection, the closest one? Um, well, my guardian angel, and I love Archangel Michael, and um, not to sound corny, but I love Jesus Christ. So I ask for protection a lot in my readings from Archangel Michael and for Jesus Christ. And I know that's like sounds 
you know, corny, but it's what I, you know, kind of what I use to protect myself. And I also really like Mary Queen of Angels. Um, and my own guardian angel, of course. <laughs> so. I also invite Jesus in my meditations. How does it come to you? What is the feeling for the Jesus energy? I just see a, a giant gold cross that I ask to protect me. Um, so I just feel like when I'm doing some heavy readings, I like to have the protection of a giant gold cross. If I'm doing like a heavy dark reading, and then sometimes when I'm in a light place like this, that's so light and bright and positive vibration, I don't feel, um, you know, the need to protect myself as much because the space is already really safe and protected. But if someone is like having a lot of messed up space, like sometimes I'll do a reading on someone who has a mental illness or a schizophrenia and they have a lot of dark energy around them. And then I'll be like, okay, like Jesus, please protect me with your cross. Archangel Michael, please, you know, with your sword, protect me. And, you know, I'll call on those energies and I'll ask my guardian angel, you know, for help and everything like that. So it just, again, depends on who and what, but I don't feel like I need a lot of protection here because I just feel like the vibes are really good and I usually feel just pretty good, you know, after I leave, so. You mentioned uh, schizophrenia and dark energy. Can you explain from your perspective what is happening, what is happening to their energy, what's wrong? I think what I've seen um, in people who I've read who have schizophrenia, I notice they have too many holes or portals in their aura. So a hole or a portal in your aura is like an exit point or almost like a door or a window. But if you don't close those doors or close those windows, then... Um, you know, it's just like in your house. When you open some doors and windows, you can let in a breath of fresh air. So when you let in that breath of fresh air, it's really nice. But if you don't know how to close the doors and the windows, your your whole house can get overrun really, really fast. You know, and it can become a disaster in your house. So that's kind of what I see most commonly in schizophrenia is people with all these portals open and they can't really control the closing and the opening of portals and they just have too many spirits coming in and out, in and out of their space so they don't know what is reality and what is not. So, um, Can you uh, change the future? Do you work on uh, people's success? How do you make people more successful? Um, the way that I help people to be more successful is I see what are the highest possible truths or what are their highest possible truth. I don't try to control the future of anyone else because that's, you know, sorcery or, you know, witchcraft. That's not, you know, what I do. Um, but what I do is I help people to find their own highest truth and their own highest possibility and to uh, create situations and scenarios where their own highest possibility is possible. So that's the way I like to do that. And the way I do that is just running gold energy and healing energy through a situation and just seeing what the highest possible truth is. So Wonderful. Thank you much. Uh, would you like to do a short sample session? A sample session on you? Yeah. Sure, yeah. So I will do the questions which are not personal, but which are often asked by our friends. Okay. So... What I see for you, um, I just see this picture of a lot of these spirit guides around you. They look like teddy bears. They look like the Grateful Dead teddy bears. And I'm seeing this picture of you like in front of this like ring of teddy bears. There's this energy of you being very connected with your inner child and having this really happy, open energy. And um, I see this picture of you again with all these like colorful spirit guides that look like these small teddy bears that are around you and it helps you to have this like lightness or this connection with your inner child. And you bring with you a fun energy to those around you. Like you know how to help people to feel lighthearted even if they're really dour and serious. And that's a gift that you bring to them. I didn't know. Thank you much. Uh, that helps. Okay, the question is very important for us. Um, our alien friends promised us to take us to their ships. And they are promising it already for two and a half years or more longer. And they take us spiritually, but something is wrong and they cannot take us physically or they cannot take us in a way that we could remember the visits. And uh, many people in our community, like tens of people or even maybe more than a hundred people, wait for that to happen and it doesn't happen. Do you have a sense why we don't have like real travel uh, happening to the ships? Because we really want to be taken and visit their ships. 
Well, it happens with your astral body. So it happens with your astral body. So it's happening out of body. I'm not saying that it needs to happen with your physical body. And what you guys are wanting to learn more about is astral and your astral body and your astral body healing and training. So what I would recommend is if you guys go to a place called Envision, they actually do astral body healings. So I think for you, that would be a good thing to do is to do an astral body healing at a place called Envision. They offer them, I think, every semester. So you could have someone um, from Envision to kind of maybe explain to you what your astral body does when it's out of body because the astral is not my expertise. But what you're ha what's happening there is your astral body is going, not necessarily your physical body. And I'm not saying that your physical body is really needing to go. Your physical body is belonging here on this earth. So um, just go to this place called Envision where they can give you an astral healing and they can teach you more about your astral or how you can get more knowledge and information to have that lucid dreaming or that lucid astral travel so we are thank you much thank you much I, I i get that message so now there is three of us me brian who calls the camera and uh, wendy is around we are from the same community which is human colony and it is a community online and um, do you have any any inspirations or any sensations about our community how it develops and any advice is how should we develop further? Okay, so I'm seeing that the way that you guys can develop further as a community is you all finding more connection within yourselves. Um, when you find the more connection and solidity, stability within yourselves, it makes the whole community stronger. Because right now you guys have a, a strength as this net, but then when you guys get disconnected from the net or the network, there's a bit of like a weaker sense of self without the community. So it looks like trying to balance that sense of community with your own individual sense of self. And it looks like that makes the community stronger and it attracts stronger individuals. So that's what I see there. Wonderful. Attract stronger individuals. Yeah, and there's a need for the people in your community all to own themselves more in the seventh chakra, in the seventh layer, for people to have that seniority over oneself. Because right now, everyone's kind of focusing. Um, there's like a hive mind or a group mind that's going on. And the more you guys are able to have seniority within yourselves and own your seventh chakra, it's going to make for a healthier, more dynamic group that's going to attract more dynamic individuals. Wonderful, wonderful, and attract more dynamic individuals. Now, many members come to us when they lose a job, because they lose a job, they lose the fear, and they become desperate. And when they become desperate, they look for something else, and they find us, and join us, and feel they find home. Now, how, do they, how, would, how would you advise them to go about their finances and gain back their material success? Um, it looks like that's a very general question. Some people who lose everything are supposed to, and they're supposed to learn to live without materials. Um, and some people, have their, everyone has their own individual answer. So sometimes it is about joining a large group, and sometimes it is about kind of giving up on material attachments. So for each person, they have their own specific karma, so there's not a general answer for that. Uh -huh. And very often my... Uh, newcomers, especially newcomers, come with a question, which is, I'm not from this world, I'm an alien, I have an alien soul, take me out of here. Oh, help me. Help. People are coming in as star seeds. So there's a lot of people who volunteered to come to this earth and come to this planet. So they volunteered to be here. So um, maybe they don't remember, but the reason they're here on this planet is they volunteered to be here. So if you're here on this planet, it's because you chose to be here, you volunteered. Maybe it was harder than what you thought but just because you have an intergalactic soul doesn't mean you don't belong on this earth because when you are born on this earth it means you chose to come here you know it's just like if someone chose to go on a trip to uh, India or Africa and administer to the poor and they're like oh I liked it in theory but not in practice like maybe I thought this was a great idea to go to India and serve the poor or go to you know a part of Africa and to serve the poor but then when you got there it was way harder than what you thought and you're like get me out of here I don't belong here but any human made a commitment to a human body a human life and if they have an intergalactic soul they came to teach just because you have an intergalactic soul doesn't mean that you can run away it means that you committed to be here on this planet 
to make a difference. So it's not about escaping the planet and running away. It's about getting more connected to the earth and doing the work that you said you were going to do. Wonderful. That's what I wanted to hear and thank you for emphasizing that. Do you speak any galactic or alien or angelic languages? No, just, just English. Just English. Yeah. And what's your favorite color? Um, I like the rainbow. Actually, I like your shirt. I like rainbow. What's um, what's your day and month of, of birth? That's personal. All right. What's your zodiac sign? Also personal. Yes. But I do love uh, Aquarius because we're in the age of Aquarius. I do love Aquarius though because we're in the age of Aquarius. Uh huh. Yeah, that was in my, my on my mind too. Um, do you want to give your uh, uh, contact information for the viewers? Uh, no, I like to keep a pretty low profile, so I'm not really worried about public advertisements. I think the people who are supposed to find me will find me in their own way. Do you want me to uh, give my information so people can find you through me? Um, you don't have to. Thank you. Is there anything else which you wanted to say and which I didn't ask? No, thank you for the interview. It was a fun surprise. All right, thank you very much, and I wish you uh, a wonderful journey. All right, thanks, you too. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.